Welcome back to Flagship Studio. We're here in the studio with Series Therapeutic CEO Eric Schaff. Eric is here presenting at the JP Morgan Conference on the microbiome therapies at, uh, being developed by Series. So let's start. You know, our theme for this conference is bigger leaps. What are some of the bigger leaps that Series is working on in 2023? Well, I think 2023 is going to be an incredibly important year for, for Series, uh, for the microbiome space but most importantly for the patients that we're looking to serve um, with recurrent C. diff infection. And if you think about bigger leaps, uh, I don't know that I could think of a bigger leap than what we think will be the approval of the first oral microbiome therapeutic in CIR 109. And, you know, Sirius was launched uh, over a decade ago by flagship with, with the what-if question. And, and it was kind of an audacious thought at the time of what if you could actually use bacteria as therapy and there was this crude proof of concept that a fecal transplant could actually interdict into the health of a patient's microbiome and have an impact into, into disease like C. diff. Um, but the founders of the company said, you know, what if you could do it in a higher scientific way? What if you could raise the bar? What if you could understand how the bacteria are, are interacting with each other and with a host? What if you could do it under GMP manufacturing conditions? Uh, what if you could do it under rigorous FDA oversight? And what if you could make it oral? And you know, here we are, 10 weeks later, uh, uh, 10 weeks later, 10 years later. Uh, sometimes feels like 10 weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes feels like 100 years. Probably. 100 years. Yeah. So the BLA has been submitted. Um, we're currently working with the FDA with a PDUFA date of April 26th. And it's an incredibly meaningful moment for, for those of us that have been part of this journey um, with a profile that we have with CIR 109 uh, to be able to help patients in the way in which we expect to do. So if I think about a leap forward, um, I think Ceres has got a great one this year. Sounds like it. And when you talk about the microbiome space in general, there's so much talk increasingly about the microbiome. Why has it been so elusive in terms of actual drug delivery? Well, you know, in, in any new modality, uh, it's seldom a straight line from point A to point B. And I, I think 109 is a great example of that. So we had really interesting positive phase one data and we had really surprising and disappointing phase two data. Okay. And um, as a company and as a team, we're most proud of what we did after that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we kind of got knocked down, we picked ourselves up, we kind of rubbed off the dirt, and we took a rigorous scientific objective analysis as to why the phase one was successful and why the phase two wasn't. And ultimately we came up with two hypotheses that we built into the phase three, and, and the result of that was an incredible magnificent profile that we think is gonna change the lives of, of patients forever. So it's seldom an easy path mm -hmm. to, to blaze a trail, and that certainly is the case with the microbiome, but. We know, and there's simply just too much evidence to suggest that the, the connection between the health of the gut and the mm -hmm. health of the body isn't, isn't material. It, it clearly is. Stefan was speaking yesterday in that chair about getting excited about learning from failure. Yeah. It allows you to learn fast. It seems like that's a perfect example of that. Yeah. And beyond SEER 109, which sounds like a big leap uh, for the year ahead, what else do you have in the clinical pipeline? Yeah, well, for us, uh, in our focus on infection, uh, SEER 109, of course, comes first. Um, but uh, the what if question continues. You know, what if uh, uh, taking an approach to a healthy microbiome can have an impact in, into dis disease and health beyond just recurrent C. diff infection? And for us, uh, we know that there are adjacencies from C. diff where we can take learnings, insights, capabilities into uh, an approach to help other patients. So for us, that starts with our CIR 155 program, okay. which is currently in a phase 1B study. Uh, we recently announced that um, we had cleared a pre-planned uh, data safety monitoring board at the end of, tw of 2022. So we'll, we'll be moving forward with a second uh, cohort in 2023, and we expect to have initial safety um, uh, and microbiome analysis from that first cohort in early, early this year. Uh, beyond 155 for GBHD, we think there are a series of opportunities for us to help patients in, in the infection space where, again, we take our learnings, capabilities, and knowledge uh, in applying that to help other patients. I'm going to ask you a last question, and that is a, a former FDA commissioner recently said he worries more about antimicrobial resistance yep. than COVID. That's a huge area, and it's an area that you've done some work and are doing some more work. Can yep. you talk a bit about that? Absolutely. And, and, you know, I think it's in some ways, it's been called a silent epidemic. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's becoming less silent. I think people, more people are understanding that AMR is a significant issue for us, and, and it's here now. So um, our areas of infection, starting with 109 and, and recurrency, moving to 155, we think that there are other areas within AMR 
where, where the microbiome approach and specifically our technology can help patients. So uh, as we uh, continue to move forward and make progress in 155, you can think about our interests in uh, cancer neutropenia and cirrhosis uh, and other areas within the AMR space where we think we can help patients in a significant way. And you're, you're speaking at the JP Morgan conference and your main focus in your presentation there, just a quick summary. Well, I, I think that uh, there's a, a disproportionate amount of, of interest in 109, mm -hmm. uh, just given the, the fact that it has such an incredible opportunity to help patients and, and create value. So uh, we'll spend most of our time talking about 109, uh, but certainly we'll be talking about 155, AMR, and other areas in which we think our technology can, can help patients create value. Big leaps in C. diff, in AMR, and more areas to come. Thanks so much for joining us in the studio. Eric Schaff. Thanks for having me.